So this is something I don't say out loud like ever. Growing up, I always felt like the dumb kid. And it might have been because my grades were always just kind of terrible or because the other kids seemed to understand things so much more easily. It could have been the ADHD diagnosis, but you mix all that together and I just perpetually felt inferior to my peers. So imagine my surprise when in the fall of 1997, I was at Harvard. Right? <laughs> Harvard. <laughs> and I imagined when I walked on campus that it was going to like implode or explode or something involving like fire and brimstone and Cambridge being sucked into the earth. <laughs> Didn't, by the way. Um, see, my high school had so much expectation. Everyone was going to go to college. And not just like any college, but a good college. The guys on my water polo team went to Notre Dame, Dartmouth, Bucknell, UCLA. Good schools, smart kid, fancy schools. Yes, no, <laughs> I said guys on my high school water polo team because I played on the men's team all four years of high school. <laughs> Why, thank you. And I got through high school and my goal was get into college, play water polo. And there I was playing division one women's water polo. Now my imposter syndrome was flaring up because I didn't think I was good enough to be in college or good enough to be playing division one college athletics. But there I was. I might have given you the wrong impression though. I wasn't going to Harvard, I was at Harvard for a water polo game. It was the beginning of my sophomore year at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. That's me, west side. And I was so excited to be there. So excited to be there with my team. I was walking around this campus looking at all these smart kids. And then we beat them by over 20 goals, solidifying the fact that those girls studied way more than they played water polo. And after the game, I'm in the locker room, and my team was so excited, talking about how many goals everyone scored, and everyone scored multiple goals, which for you non-water polo experts is fairly rare, talking about how big our win was, also not super common in water polo to win by that much. And I was sitting by myself, and I was trying to get changed, and I couldn't pull my shirt <laughs> over my arm. because I couldn't move my arm, and I was terrified. I knew, I knew sitting there, I knew that whatever happened at the end of that game in my shoulder was bad. I knew that it wasn't going to easily heal. I knew, I knew that I wasn't going to play water polo again. And I didn't. By the time I got home for winter break, back to California, I was destroyed. The whole plan, go to college, play water polo. I'm a sophomore, there's no other plan. I transferred schools after that. Part of it was the depression. Part of it was that I was so embarrassed. Was I not strong enough, smart enough, good enough? Why couldn't I hack it? What was wrong with me? My whole plan, go to college, play water polo. So I had to figure out a new plan. But that was after I, as a mature and responsible 19-year-old, responded in a mature and responsible 19-year-old way, I climbed into bed and stayed there for like six months. After that, I figured I have to at least do the go to college part. Transferred to Cal State Long Beach. Go Beach! <laughs> Found a great home here. And then I had to figure out a new plan. Shockingly, I hadn't planned to pass, go to college and play water polo. I hadn't planned any further than that. And then one day it came to me. I'll go to law school. <laughs> this was a perfect plan. 
I was always fairly loud. People told me my whole life that I was argumentative. I talked my way onto a men's water polo team. <laughs> law school. And then I don't ever have to decide anything again, right? Go to law school, get a job, be a lawyer. No more decisions. The thing is, though, I chose a job. I never stopped and chose a life. College, check. Law school, check. 100,000 plus in student loan debt, check. Uh, passed the California bar exam, first time, woo! And then I got hired for my dream job. And there I was, from 19 years old, a complete embarrassed loser, not knowing what I was going to do with my life, to 27 years old, and I was a deputy district attorney for the county of Los Angeles, and it was everything to me. Go to law school, get a job, be a lawyer. And I shoved myself into that lawyer box. I was such a lawyer, and I was, I'm not talking like Allie McBeal lawyer. I'm talking like black suit, pearls, don't mess with me, I'm a badass, you don't wanna to talk to me at parties, lawyer. <laughs> but I never picked a life. And the thing is, when you start to put yourself in a box like that around a job, whatever it is, I'm a doctor, I'm a teacher, I'm a student, I'm a starving artist, you cut out all the other parts of yourself. You just keep the parts that fit into that box. But that keeps you small. That cuts out all the other. And when you live small, you start to settle. Settle for good enough. I'm happy enough. I get paid well enough. I mean, life's fine. But it's not extraordinary. Because you hadn't picked a life. I was about eight years into my career when I started to feel really trapped by my little lawyer box. And I know, right, it's like, oh, I'm trapped by my dream job. Whatever, lady. But I was. I was totally trapped totally trapped, and I wasn't happy. Why is my dream job not making me happy? And what does this mean? Go to law school, get a job, be a lawyer. I don't have a plan for this. I don't know what this means for my boys, my husband, my family, for me. Am I a loser? Am I not smart enough, not good enough? Can I not hack it? I didn't know what to do next. I didn't have a plan. But, because the universe loves me, that was the year I had two back surgeries. Two, one year. And the thing about back surgery is you really have a lot of time to think about your life while you're, you know, laying on your back, recovering from surgery. I did a lot of thinking about my life and hanging out on my phone. I love Instagram. And I spent a lot of time on Instagram during this period in my life. The thing on Instagram is there are all these really annoying inspirational posts, right? Like, <laughs> life begins when you decide, and there's a voice inside that doesn't use words. Listen. <laughs> that one's roomy, by the way, that's a legit quote. And as I'm trying to figure out, you know, my life, I started being one of these people that's like posting all up on their Instagram with inspirational posts because I was starting to change. I wanted more from my life. And I felt alone again and scared. And I wanted other people to not feel so alone. I mean, why am I just figuring this out at like 35 plus years old that there is more to life than a job? And I think it's because we're taught to choose a job. And it looks like this. So, what do you want to be when you grow up? Right? You all know this question. You've asked it. You've answered it. The expected response is a job title. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a paleontologist. I mean, when I was a kid, I wanted to be an orca trainer at SeaWorld. And after Blackfish, I might not want to admit that out loud, but that's what I wanted to be. <laughs> it's my dream. But the expected response is a job. We're literally teaching kids from the time that they can understand this question, and in my limited experience with my two boys, this age is around four, to pick a job. 
We're telling them what you are at your core is a job title. And the problem is then I want to be a lawyer becomes I'm a lawyer and there's no other plan. What's even worse than that is this question has a super judgy older sister. Yes, questions have siblings, go with me. You've all been asked this question, you've all asked this question. So, what do you do? This, que this question, judgment and expectation. You're expected to answer in the form of a job title, but it's also supposed to kind of impress the person that's asking you the question, right? And if you worry that your job title might not be impressive enough, you explain. Oh, huh. I'm a cashier at Sport Chalet. Oh, but I'm studying for the LSAT. Yeah, I'm going to law school. No, I'm gonna be a lawyer. I was really annoying in my 20s. Um, maybe that example's just me. But we embrace this. The problem is words matter. The words we say to ourselves over and over matter. You're not just, I'm a, but you tell yourself enough, I'm a lawyer, and that's all you become. I was lucky enough to be in San Diego for a conference to see Jeff Hoffman speak, and he talked about wanting a life full of travel. And then he went on to found Priceline.com. Rock on Jeff. Mission accomplished, life full of travel. But he got it right. He picked a life and then built everything else around it and not the other way around. I realized that I had been going about this completely the wrong way. And I don't understand because in the United States, less than half of workers are even happy with their jobs. Yet we wrap our lives around this thing that we do for money. So I walked out of that conference room and I went out onto the balcony overlooking the ocean and I stood at a table by myself with a piece of paper. I folded it in half and I wrote down what I want my life to look like and what my life actually looked like. And they weren't the same. And I knew, I knew that I had to quit my dream job. And I did. On January 31st, 2016, I turned in my badge. Obviously, I Instagrammed it. I mean, I'm not a psycho. It has one of the highest likes of any of my Instagrams. And I'm not gonna tell you that this was an easy decision and that it wasn't scary. It's terrifying. I spent all of my really adult life, I'm a lawyer, I'm a lawyer. And I knew I had to be more me. I had to be something else to find the life I wanted. I had to become something more to move in to a better life. Get ready to write stuff down because we're going to talk about you. What do you want your life to look like? You can choose what do you want your life to look like. Do you want to work remotely from Italy? Do you want to write a book? Do you want to be up here? I did. Here I am. <laughs> Do you want to get home while the sun's still up so that you can play with your kids outside, maybe cook dinner? It doesn't have to be dramatic or conventional. It just has to be authentic to you. I knew that I wanted my mornings to be better because my mornings sucked, which is why I was at the Miracle Morning Conference in San Diego in the first place. But my mornings look something like this. Drag two kids out of bed, yell at them to get dressed faster, yell at them to eat breakfast quicker, say, I gotta get out the door, mommy's gotta go to court, no, there's a judge, they're gonna be bad, mommy can't be late, go, 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 go. And there was always a judge, and I was always late. They don't like that, by the way, tip. They don't like it when you're late. I wanted something more for me and for my family. So when I left my job, I started an online legal services company. No commute, no start time, no judgy judges. Awesome. What does that look like for you? The thing is, before you can shift into that life, you have to shift yourself. You have to choose who you are going to be. Because if I was wrapped up and I'm a district attorney, I'm a lawyer, quitting my job and starting something new would never have happened. I had to change first. 
And that's when you pick three words that change your life. Science tells us that words actually affect the release of hormones in our bodies. Words affect the expression of genes in our brain. Words matter on a cellular, fundamental level in our beings. I knew I needed to embrace all of me, not just the part in the little box. And I knew becoming something more is all that was gonna lead me to a life change. And I decided I wanted to be a shiny, sparkly badass. <laughs> what do you want to be? Who is your ideal self? Who are you? How do you want to be? Not what, how. Bold, present, authentic, rebellious? What are the words that you're gonna tell yourself? What are the words that you're gonna allow to change you from the inside out? The great thing about choosing words, choosing your words, is that you don't have to quit your job. You don't have to upend your life. You just have to decide who you are and how you want to be. You have the power to choose your life. I didn't know this. I'm telling you this. You get to choose your life. You get to choose how you want to be in your life. So choose wisely. Thank you. <laughs>